Rejoice and be glad in it. And as we say every day across this world, send now. Come on, send now. Prosperity. We speak it into your life. And of course, this is a very special Greg Davis Live today. And in the audience, as you see, we have men and women of God from all over the city, all over the state, and even some that have flew in for this very. Give yourselves a hand, pastors. Amen. If I were you, I would call somebody today because there's an impartation that's about to happen because we have a general in the faith. Our, our 21st century hero in the gospel is here today and we love him dearly. Of course, he is a pastor. He is a bishop. He is a second presiding bishop. He is, I was about to say, he is that. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's an author. He's a movie producer. He is an entrepreneur. He is all that in one and much more. But today we have him here on the Word Network for the first time in the studio's live. Why don't you welcome my guest today? We're going right to it, Bishop T.D. Jakes, everybody. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Now, Bishop, Thank you. Thank you. I'm here every day, but they, they're not here. They're it's not because here of you. Come oh, on. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Bishop, we are excited to have you here at this time. Uh, so much going on in the world. Yes. And uh, we just want to thank you for your leadership. I was just at your pastor's conference for a day. Yes. And you talked about the pregnant pause. Yes. And I'm, I got my notes. I looked at them last night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you blessed me. Where are we? And I don't usually ask these questions because, you know, you ask the same question. Where, where are we, though, in the body of Christ? Where are we at in time as far as the body of Christ? I think that we're in a period of great transition. And uh, we are thrust into a transition, whether we want to be or not. The world is changing right up under our feet. And it is in moments of transition where leadership is most strongly needed because people feel vulnerable, they feel uncertain, they feel insecure, and we need to have a definite, clear sound of direction from God like never before because all of the institutions to which we have aligned ourselves for solidarity have begun to corrode to some degree. Some of them are moving in directions that we don't understand, and the church needs to be that solid rock place when everything else is sinking, there needs to be a solid rock place in our community to which we can rely and anchor in the midst of the storm. With everything going on, you have pastors and audience and pastors that are watching from all over the country. We were talking in the back and you say you're reading a lot of leadership yes. um, books. What should preachers be telling their people at this time? I think that our challenge is not just in what we say. I think the question is a telling question because we think that everything can be fixed by preaching. But we're dealing with a generation that has lost yeah. respect for preaching. <laughs> yeah. 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 So people don't want to hear what you say until they see what you do. And that's why we must make a clear distinction between preaching and leadership. We have a lot of people who are quite adept at preaching, and yet they are not seeing the movement and the growth that they want to see in spite of the great anointing that really is on their lives. But see, leadership gives credibility to preaching because it gives infrastructure, it, it gives direction. Preaching without leadership promises hope that is never realized. Wait, wait, say, we, we got a little bit. Say, okay. say that again, okay. <laughs> preaching, without preaching without leadership promises hope that is never realized. One of the worst things you can be is a great preacher and a poor leader because you keep promising something on Sunday that people never see materialize in the congregation, you see? So whereas we have all been trained to be great preachers, we have often not been trained to be great leaders and great thinkers. In order to be a great speaker, you must first be a great thinker. And I think great thinkers are known not by how much they know, but how much they ask. Yeah. See, when you read, whether you read a text or read a book or read a situation, it is coming before it as a fool that makes you wise. When you predispose to already know the text, you lock out the opportunity to enlarge yourself. Yeah. So in reality, what God wants is not people that are full, but people that are hungry. That hunger must start with the leaders themselves that come before God and say, I'm a fool. 
I know nothing. I can do nothing. I have nothing to say. I don't know what to do. How do I get us from A to B? The person who predisposes to know everything limits themselves to their own finite ability. Wow. Yeah. Transparency. Mm -hmm. How important is that nowadays in the pulpit? To be, I noticed even in your message um, that you preached, pause, uh, pregnant pause, mm -hmm. that you were very transparent, mm -hmm. telling what you've been through. Oh yes, you become more reflective now. I'm sure we were talking about birthdays coming. Yeah. But how, how important is transparency? I think it's very important for two reasons. My greatest strength is never in my success. My greatest strength is always in my struggle. Ooh. So whenever I get ready to do hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy, I don't show him my trophies. I show him my scars. Oh. <laughs> See, it, it, it is the death of my wounds that proves who I am. When Jesus rose from the dead, he didn't show a crown. He said, reach hither your hand and feel the nail prints of my hand. See where you're piercing in the side. Because the validation of the authenticity of your ministry always comes in how you have survived being wounded. Second reason that we ought to do it, we have a generation now who is only moved by authenticity. They, they have heard our speeches. They have heard our, our, our moments of aggrandizement. They want to know the real story because they are struggling to understand how do I reconcile my ideals with my realities? On Sunday morning, I hear the ideals, but on Monday, I deal with the realities. And how do I reconcile the inconsistencies between those two polarities? Bishop, we hear you talking and we, we hear your messages and we look at you and we say, man, he's so strong. Has it ever been a time in your ministry, Bishop T.D. Jakes, that you felt like quitting? You were tempted. <laughs> Which time you do you want me to tell you? <laughs> How much time do we have? We don't have enough time. Of course, you know, first of all, if you think that I appear strong, it, it would only be because the Bible said, let your light so shine before men, before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That doesn't mean you don't have bad works and that doesn't mean you don't have a blinking light. But that is stuff that you work out in prayer. You don't work that out over the pulpit. You work that out in prayer. That's why I can go to God in prayer to bring him my frustrations and my inconsistencies. And that's a privilege that you must never lose as a leader. Every leader needs to have the ability to be able to repent. But you don't need to be able to do that on stage. Yeah. You need to be able to have a secret closet that you can go in and put on your Superman suit by discarding your carnality. And, and so as it relates to quitting... The road to where I am was littered with moments of frustration so overwhelming that a, any, a person any weaker or a person with a weaker prayer life would have died. The way, the way was so tempestuous that if I really didn't like you and I really wanted to hurt you and I really wanted to damage you really good, I'd, I'd turn my ministry over to you. Wow. Because if you took the leadership, if you took the leadership without the agony that brought me here, the shock would be too much for you. I could kill you. I could kill you with success. One of the worst things you can have is an opportunity that you're not ready for. You see, that, can I, can I go just come a little on, bit come deeper? On, come that on. was the problem with the prodigal son. It was that he got something that was his too soon. And anytime you get something that is yours too soon, you will destroy it and it will destroy you. So, so when you're talking to young preachers, I, I do a post young preacher. When you're talking to young preachers, is that is that what's happening with a lot of young preachers? They're getting it too soon. They don't sit under the father long enough. Uh, it's not just that they don't sit up under the fathers long enough, because some of the fathers drove them out. But but <laughs> yeah, some of them had no choice. They ended up homeless. But the reality of the matter is, is that the young pre preachers caught their fathers late in life. So, so you saw my success, but you didn't see my beginning. So you think that you should start where I ended. We, I did not model before you the days of my frustration because you were too young to remember them. You caught me on television. So you think my ministry oh, started up on oh, the lights. Oh. You didn't catch me frying chicken. Oh. Oh, you yeah. don't hear what I'm saying? No. You, you didn't catch me cleaning out the church bathroom. So when you see, saw me on television and you go back to a reality that requires that you and your wife stay after church and clean the bathrooms, you feel like you must not be hearing from God. You don't understand that that's a road sign on the way to destiny. Why, why, and we're going to shift gears in just a minute. While you're talking about that, though, what was the, I, I've heard, you know, I've been to many of your pastor's conference. You talk about how you drove the car, played the organ, and you cooked for the mm -hmm. for woman that I lose. Yeah. What was the turning point? Do you remember in your mind a turning point? 
I think that there, I've been asked that many times, but certainly I, it, it would be remiss not to acknowledge the power of Azusa and preaching at Azusa. But if you see that in isolation to all the little steps along the way that were turning points, every relationship is an opportunity for a turning point. And see, if we only point at one, then people will discard other people looking for the one big thing. But it is the series of little things along the way that lead to the big thing. So what we have created is this monster where people are chasing a big stage when it is a series of steps that brings you before great men, not just one. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And you will never be a great leader until you love small people. You see, until you can walk into a church that's only 25% full and preach your head off, you, you, you don't have the right to preach in the stadium. Because you are proven, you are proven in privacy. David learned how to use his rock with nobody watching. So that when the stadiums were full, he had gotten his craft down pat. So somebody would, would look at that and say, oh, I want to go in the stadium. No, you want to be in private and go against your lion and kill your bear so that when your giant comes, he doesn't eat you. Because anytime you come before the giant in public and you haven't fought the lion and bear in private, you're going to be publicly humiliated. We're talking to Bishop T.D. Jakes, and of course, we got pastors in the audience. You, you mentioned Azusa, and I just want to throw this in. I remember that day, and I was a young pastor, hungry, and I couldn't get in because it was so packed, but now I'm sitting here interviewing you for probably the fourth time in my life. Isn't that amazing? And won't God turn it around? Yes, won't he God. will. Amen. The, the, the funny thing about that, and I know we don't have much time, no, go, go but the funny thing about that is the year before I spoke, I was in the nosebleed section. And Fred Price was preaching. The, the year, year before. The year before. I was in the nose bleed. I mean, in the bleed <laughs> nose section. Sarah Jordan Powell saw me, and the next night she brought me up front. The only reason I was up front is because I was with her. Richard Hinton preached. And Richard Hinton made a statement. He said, the stage is turning. He said, I didn't come out here to preach tonight. I came out here as a stage hand to tell you to get in your place. The stage is turning. And when he said it, Tears leaped out of my face. I could see them. That's how fast they leaped out of my face. I knew that God was talking to me, but I didn't know that the next year I would be doing the, the premiere night on Friday night. Yeah. Wow. Bishop. By this time next year. Come on. You understand? By, by this time next year. That's why you have to give diligent attention to everything you're dealing with right now because God can turn your life so drastically around in a year that you won't, you, he will pull you out of blessing you won't have room enough to receive. At the time I walked up to Azusa to speak, we had one tape duplicator. And we were taping all night long to get enough tapes and I had no staff, one person on staff. And by that time next year, I was duplicating tapes in such mass that I owned an 18-wheeler. God can move you around. You can have the anointing for the opportunity, but if you don't have the leadership, you're wow. still going to be in trouble. Wow. So while you perfect your gift, it is not just your gift, it is your character. It is your family. It is your marriage. So many things are going to be tested when you get there that if you are ready for something that your wife is not, that your kids are not, that your church is not, that your city is not, you will lose the blessing because you don't have the infrastructure to support the weight of glory that God is going to press down on your life. Y'all sit down. <laughs> Y'all sit down. Bishop, talking about big meetings, you got a big meeting coming up. Yes. And I think it's so, so wonderful because I seek for balance. Mm -hmm. And in this meeting, Megafest, it's a balanced meeting. Yes. Talk about, I, I want to act like nobody has ever heard of Megafest before that's watching. Okay. Talk about what is Megafest. You know, the question gives the revelation to the whole substratum behind Megafest, balance. That question is so great because I see people who have deep uh, anointed meetings where everybody comes right. together and they pray together and they get a big charge spiritually, but they don't really prepare people economically. Okay. So people are really, really anointed, but the rent is behind. Okay. See, and so all of a sudden, anytime anything is out of balance, it will fall. This table will fall if it didn't have four legs up under. One leg lower than the other and the whole table comes over. If I am stronger spiritually than I am financially or stronger financially than I am physically, I'm going to fall over. 
I can be anointed and still not have the energy to deliver on the level of the opportunity. So MegaFest deals with everything. We've got something for all ages. We've got something for teenagers. We've got something for kids. This year, we're going to be training kids how to start their own business. We have got up, up to $50,000 that we're going to deliver out in $15,000, $10,000, wow. $5,000 increments wow. to young wow. entrepreneurs who wow. come to us with the best idea. Wow. We're going to give them startup capital to start their own businesses. Because if you, you understand my vision, yeah. because if I can teach you how to do legal business, then you will never get caught in the gangs and do illegal business. So I want to take your business acumen that has been misallocated and reallocated to something positive. We are doing sessions on empowerment and entrepreneurship, and we're doing some things specifically with business in mind. Because the Bible said the kingdoms of this world yeah. shall become the kingdoms of yeah. our God and of his Christ. In the King James Version, when the Bible said occupy till he comes, the, the correct translation is do business till I come. Exactly. So if we are going to be effective in the marketplace, Jesus complained about the church in the marketplace. He said, my people are like children dancing in the marketplace. And it describes the church perfectly because we have been dancing where, where the world has been doing business. So they see us as irrelevant. So when you come to Megafest, we're going to have blazing church. You're going to have Joseph Prince. You're going to, you're going to have Bishop Jackie McCullough. You're going to have myself, my wife, and a, a host of others. We're, you're going to have uh, a Pastor John Hanna doing a midnight prayer. You're going to have uh, Pastor Bill Winston pouring into us, preparing us, getting us ready for what is next. Carolyn Leaf is going to be ministering a host of others from a wide spectrum throughout the body of Christ. Shane Perry and so many others pouring into us the word of God. Ty Tribbett and a host of all the gospel artists that we could gather are going going to be there singing and ministry, but we're also going to be teaching entrepreneurial classes, business classes. We're going to be teaching your young people about Jesus with one hand and about business with the other. I want to help single mothers who are struggling to raise their children alone. I want to reinforce what they're teaching during the summer. Bring me your kids and I'll send you back men. Wow. I'll so, send you back men. We're not just having church. It's also a time of fun because I see some comedy and yeah, everything. We're going to have some comedy shows. We're doing, a, we're doing a comedy show because laughter is important. I try to end my evening watching comedy, de-stress my mind from all of the problems I've dealt with all day. You have to put a barrier between what you do during the day so that you don't sleep with your job. Say it again. Come on, expand. You, you see, yeah. be, be, because you can't deal with death and life and cancer and disease and divorce and not take that stuff to bed with you. Your mind needs to detox, just a little bit of detox so that you can lay down and that he can give his beloved sleep. So we're going to have comedy shows. We're going to have fun. We're going to have good, clean fun. The kind of fun that you can get your laugh on and bring your grandmother, not be embarrassed in the setting. But we're also doing the International Faith and Family Film Festival. The reason we're doing that is because we want to strengthen and faith and family films. The Hollywood needs to know that we're here, that there is a market for what we have. You can either get over the pulpit and scream at the darkness, or you can do something about it and light a candle. I decided to light a candle. But, but even above all of that, I want you to understand this. The church, the world does not see us in our churches on Sunday morning. We get like to say we're speaking truth to power. The real truth of the matter is power didn't hear you. Your congregation heard you. We have to come out of our churches and meet in the public square in masses enough because the world pays attention to a crowd and the church has been invisible too long. But I want to challenge every pastor, every leader, every family reunion, come on down and have it at Megafest. I plan the party, you bring the people. We're going to let the world know that we exist, that we are alive, that we're well. Not only do we shout, dance, we do business, we vote. Yeah. Yeah. We vote. We have to come out of the shadows and let people see us in mass. And rather than being jealous of each other's power, we need to use each other's power because we are better together than we are apart. The information is on the screen July, I mean, June 28th through July 1st. There it is right there, June 28th through July uh, 1st. You can go to www.mega-fest.com, mega uh, dash fest.com dot can, org dot org mm -hmm. oh, they give me the wrong I'm sorry Bishop. that's all right mega dash fest dot org dot org all yeah. right uh, 1-800 Bishop 2 you can dial that number and you can register now Bishop there are many people they got one week for vacation mm -hmm. one week and they, they don't want to just spend it in church you right. know, you've heard 
So this is more than church. It's more than church. We got Six Flags. We got activities. You can go horseback riding. We've got all of the shops and stores and malls and activities and church. You can you can design your experience the way you want to have it. That's why we did it with so many. And then the other thing that we did, we did it so you could bring your unsaved relatives. Good. Put them in an environment where they don't have to take the whole thing in at once. Because let's face it, all of our relatives that we love are not as into God as we are. We cannot divorce them from our families because they have not caught up with our God. But putting people in an atmosphere where they can experience Christ casually, in the restaurant, in the hotel, on the ride down, on the trip down, can be the catalyst for your drug dealing son to end up my head deacon. Wow. So if you only have one week, it's for the whole family. Who should come? Who should come to make a fest? I don't, I, it would be easier to tell you who shouldn't come. I'm inviting the atheist, the agnostic. I'm inviting the Jew. No, I'm serious. The LGBT, the Jewish community. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're into. God made all of his people. You come down. You cannot change people you will not touch. Let's stop segregating our churches as if we are elite clubs for yuppies and open up the door of the church which Jesus died to do and let him sort out the fish, but let's drag in the nets. Bishop, I heard when I was at the um, pastor's conference, you talk about something called the Bishop's Village. Yes. What is the Bishop's Village? The Bishop's Village is my awareness of the fact that because I do so much work in Hollywood and I appreciate the big screen, I'm working on movies right now, but the eyeballs are moving from big screens to television screens, from television screens to the screens on our phones. Everybody in here right now, everybody in here from the janitor to the CEO has a phone. Everybody has a phone. Everybody in here is away from the television set. Our cyber station is designed so that I am in your pocket 24 hours a day. You can arrange it around your schedule. You can get uh, teaching like this in the Bishop's Village. The conversations I'm having with thinkers and leaders, secular and sacred, about life, about politics, about religion, about finances, about business. It's all in the village. You can meet other people in the village and find out what their concerns are. Share information, cross-pollinate, network with your business, your company. It's all going on in the village because we understand that the old African adage is true. It takes a village to raise a child, Good. but it also takes a village to raise a ministry, to raise a man, to raise a marriage, to raise a company. It takes a village. Nobody gets where they are by themselves. Thebishopsvillage.com You can go and follow thebishopsvillage.com and they'll tell you how to sign up. Let me tell them a little something about that. Sure. There's a there's a minute subscription rate for a year subscription to the village. And if you will honor that, it will save me from having to put a bunch of advertisers on there where you have to go through all of these commercials before you get to what you want. It's such a small free. It works much like Netflix. You can get it on your phone. You can get all types of information available to you. And I designed it that way so that we would not be hindered with Colgate commercials. Amen. But if you don't do it, I'm going to be on there with Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, got, we got about five minutes. I, you know, we always talk about the negative and we always talk about the struggle. But Bishop, what were some of your proudest moments? One of the proudest moments of my life was to uh, be asked to be the inaugural speaker for President Obama's first wow. uh, inauguration. And not only was the moment a prestigious historical moment, but it stood before me on the backdrop of my father having brought me to Washington to hear Dr. King. Only now, fast forward 50 years, I am bringing my son and I am speaking for the first African-American president of the United States. Regardless of whether you agree or believe in his politics, you cannot ignore the fact that this was a historical moment for our country and our nation. And to allow my sons to see that and to see their father in that light was to me, uh, I can't even articulate what that meant for me as a person of color and as a father. The hardest thing and the most important thing that we do is not to pastor, it's to parent. Yeah. Because if everybody thinks you're wonderful except your own children, th then you have lost credibility. And for me, my first priority is to make sure that I'm a hero in my own house. That's good, yeah. Yeah. Bishop, I introduced you as movie producer. You even did, it, did a little acting and jump in the broom. I saw you marry him, and you've done so many great things. What's, is there anything next? Is, what's left? What's next? I don't know what's next, but I do know where my passion is right now. <clears throat> my passion is to take all the things I've been through, pain, purpose, promise, 
and to pour it into the next generation, to pour it into the next man or woman who has that thing, to mentor them and to model it in front of them so that we can cut down the learning curve and increase the impact. I am concerned how I leave this world for my children and grandchildren. And whether it is successful or fails will depend on how many leaders we can find. Quick point, Jesus did not tell us to pray for souls. We pray for souls all the time, but that was not the command he gave us. He said to pray for laborers. He said that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so while we are busy going after harvest, what I'm going after is laborers, leadership. You do this, uh, you share with me that you just finished taping over 100 and something shows for your show, so you know how to do what I'm going to tell you. Now, yes, I want sir. you to take this camera right here mm -hmm. for just about a minute and a half, and I want you to encourage somebody that's watching. It is no accident that you're watching this television right now. It is by God's orchestration and design. And you may be hurting and wounded. You don't know who to trust, who to talk to, where to go, how you can get answers or solutions. You think that you are where you are because somebody neglected or failed or let you down in some way. The very fact that you look at your life in that way says that you don't understand who you really are. Everything you need to raise yourself is inside of yourself. You have the power inside of yourself to get up out of that situ situation and arise. If you allow Christ in you, the hope of glory to arise. It doesn't matter who didn't raise you, who didn't love you, who didn't teach you, who didn't help you, who didn't stand by you. All of those were God speaking to you saying, you don't need this, you don't need that, you don't need this. Everything you need, you've got. Everything you lost, you do not need. God will always perform miracles off of what is left, not what is right. You've been praying for what is right. God's been waiting for you to discover what is left. Yeah. And so in the final moments of my opportunity to speak to you, yeah. I will not pray about anything that you lost, but I will pray that God would strengthen the things that remain. It might be a handful of meal, but God will use it. Yes, sir. It may be a pot of oil, but God will use yes, it. Sir. It may be two fish and five loaves of bread, but God will use it. It may be your hand outstretched from a crawling growl and a bleeding heart to touch not the hand but the hem of his garment. But God will always use what you have left. The devil made a mistake when he left you with anything because anything you got left is power when you place it in the hands of God. So be of good courage. He that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I am Bishop T.D. Jakes and, what? and I approve this message. <laughs> Preachers, that's called a closing. Mega Fest, June 28th through July 1st. Mega Fest, uh, dash, uh, mega dash fest.org. 1-800-BISHOP-2. Go there and register on our way to Mega Fest. As always, sir, it's a pleasure. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. I wonderful. love you. Thank you. Thank you. All my brothers. Come on, let's give it up for the one and only. On behalf of the Word Network, Mr. Dale, we'll see you next time on Greg Davis Live. Let's go. Peace out. <laughs>